Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Ventures of Kramer. So on today's episode, I'm going to be comparing Starlink versus HughesNet, one of the other major competitors out there for satellite internet, and kind of my perspective on which one I think is better in the end. So to start with though, we have the difference in where they're actually located. So Starlink is a low earth orbit. And so it's down to like 342 miles or 550 kilometers. Whereas HughesNet is one of the ones that's a lot farther away, pushing 22,000 miles away from earth in its orbit. And so I can, there's benefits and there's drawbacks to either one of these. The fact that HughesNet is so much farther away does cause an increase in latency. And we'll be looking at that here in a little bit yet. By being so far away, though, they're able to cover a much greater area of Earth with less satellites, basically. Like, I mean, I don't know how many satellites they have up there. I just imagine it's just a couple or just main one big one. Yet Starlink, though, being much closer, they start to actually drop those latencies, but then they have to start increasing and having a lot more satellites in order to be able to make that possible. As in terms of contracts though, Starlink, it's a monthly thing. You can stop it. If I wanted to stop my service with Starlink right now, I could just go right on the website, stop, or just like take off my payment method. And once my, I'm done for the month, I'm done. I'm not gonna get penalized. I'm not gonna hit with late fees. Yeah, with HughesNet though, you have to sign up for a two year contract. And this is a big assumption. So those that actually have HughesNet, it's been a long time since I had it and if you let me know, hey, what happens though if you do cancel it? Because I can't find that in some other different terms of service. And I would assume that's only something you can see once you actually sign up on the contract. But I would assume you have to pay the full two years, no different than like a cell phone. If you're paying off the cell phone over 30 months and you try and like stop it early, oh, you're on the hook for the rest of the entire time. So if you've done 15 of the 30 months, oh, nope, you got to pay the rest of it. So that'd be nice to know. Definitely comment down below. It'd help out a lot. As for the initial price, it is actually a lot more comparable than what I would think. Um, there is a different option that HughesNet allows that Starlink is not, and that actually comes into the whole two-year contract piece. So for Starlink, you're 499 plus taxes and shipping for the dish and the Wi-Fi router. So all that is inside there, which is nice. And you have a lot of other different options that you can put for being able to mount it. You're not just stuck having a technician come out and then I couldn't find any installation costs or whether or not sometimes maybe they have different things for HughesNet. But for Starlink though, you're able to set and put this up. It's that simple to be able to put together and connect up. You don't need to have some certified technician come out and actually install it on your house. Um, and I really like the fact that they have a no drilling option, which is the roof ridge line. That's the one that I'm currently using right now. And it's been doing great even in the wind. As for HughesNet though, they do say the dish is free with the installation, but to get the installation, you have to sign up for a two year contract. But then they charge, which just blows my mind that a Wi Fi modem can cost $450. I've recently set and done some shopping for Wi Fi routers, and they cost nowhere near that. I mean, the top of the line, best one that I've ever seen, even reviewed by. What was that Linus Tech Tips was like the version above the Asus router that I got. Even that thing was like $300 and it was way more than what was ever needed. I mean, it had two WAN ports. Who needs two WAN ports? But you can either pay for it all up front, the $449.98 plus taxes and shipping. I don't know how they do all some of that. Or you can pay $14.99 a month and they really try and get you to lease that. And the $14.99 a month does cost less over the two years. I just did a little bit of math and it's $359.76. If you were to sit and try and split it out over two years and they say, well, then you'll have the best router, but I don't, who knows what the actual upgrade and things like that will end up being for the Wi-Fi modem and things like that. And what do you have to do to try and exchange them if one goes bad or can't find some of that fine detailed stuff but hopefully though it's not too bad as for monthly price Starlink right so so far I really like how Starlink is they don't quote specifically how much data you get but so far though 
I've had no slowdowns, nothing at all, no drop speeds, and I've hit unlimited data. And I've done hundreds, if not close to like a terabyte worth of data the past, like each past month. It's been a massive amount of data that I've been using between downloading video games, watching movies in 4K, uh, watching TV shows, to playing video games, to sitting constantly uploading videos onto youtube i mean a lot of different stuff and it's 99 dollars a month if you were to try and compare the same 99 dollars a month over to HughesNet, you get 30 gigabytes of data for the entire month now i will admit though they do give every single plan an extra 50 gigabytes between 2 a.m and 8 a.m which so if you need to be doing some downloading things like that and you have the ability to run some like automatic updates and things like that between that time frame that's a good option to be able to at least have that so you're not using up all your other regular data and so but otherwise though to get 50 gigabytes of data i mean i've done 100 gigabytes of data in a day on starlink let alone the 50 gigabytes here so in reality they do try and say that oh well although it's 30 gigabytes you really get 80 but how many people are actually up in between 2 and 8 a.m. to sit and get on their computer to do some of that stuff? Maybe in the morning ones, maybe that could work out, but who knows how that's going to happen there. And that, they don't say what time zone, though. So I'm assuming it would be 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. based on your time zone where you're at. I would hope that's the case and not like, oh, it's 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. Eastern time, even though you might live on the Pacific coast. As for download and upload speeds, though. Starlink, and I can see this, I've verified these. I've never had, actually, I've rarely ever had speeds drop down to like 50. If I'm on my computer, I will honestly usually always see anywhere from like 80 to, I've seen, I've hit some highs though, and it was on downloads, it did lower down. I've hit over 200 megabits per second. On an average though, I would say it's well over 100 megabits per second. Uploads, it started out at about 10 to 15 megabits per second, but I have seen it constantly increase. And when I've been doing different uploads for YouTube, I've usually seen well over 20 megabits per second, and sometimes a continuous like 23 to 25 megabits per second, which is really nice. And on top of that though, Starlink doesn't even have like what, not even a 10th of the satellites that they're gonna have up in order because they've been approved for 40 some thousand satellites, and they only have just shy of a thousand satellites up in space. Once they get even more satellites up, speeds are supposed to constantly continue to increase. Latency, we'll get to that one a little bit, it's supposed to even drop in even more too. But when you get that laser link and you get laser going at the speed of light in between the different dishes up in space, oh, it's going to be amazing. HughesNet though, every single one of their plans, they do download and all of them say up to. So you're not actually guaranteed to get 25 megabits per second you get up to and whenever I've had different Usenet in the past yeah you you don't get that like there will be some times that you'll get it and it's definitely at off peak times and it will always like drop down but I mean you're going to be seeing more in like the 15 to 20 at best and then your uploads are up to three megabits per second and so those are definitely some much much slower speeds and some people might be like well both of those are really slow and what you have to keep in mind though is for a lot of people you have either no option or you have HughesNet or you have Starlink they don't sometimes they don't have cell phone like coverage so you can't even do 5G or LTE none of the different stuff is out there and so those speeds though the 25 down that's only while you're on the data plan like if you do the 30 gigabytes a month that's comparable to Starlink you get 25 megabits per second down for just that 30 gigabytes. Now, if you go over that though, you're gonna see your speeds drop down to one to three megabits per second. They don't say though between 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. if your speeds will increase again though. And they don't even say how slow the upload is once you've used up all your data. So definitely have to keep a very close eye on your data and be able to help try and track that to know because otherwise, I mean, maybe you need to stream something or who knows what's going on for people like streaming for classes and Zoom sessions, things like that. HughesNet, definitely much more limited. In terms of latency though, latency is this idea of the delay in transmission. 
And something to keep in mind, the blink of an eye is approximately 100 milliseconds. Starlink though, 20 to 40, and I've seen that. I've constantly seen that. Now, whenever I am playing a video game online, well, actually where I've had to work, me and my dad are both playing online on Starlink and I'm streaming, I can still hit 50 to 70 milliseconds on Starlink, which is awesome. It's great for gaming. There is times though when it does transition between satellites that you do drop out and that's going to get better as time goes on. But I just want to try and be fair on that. And I have personally verified this though. I've been able to stream multiple HD movies at once. I did three 1080p HD movies and two 4K movies, no buffering. Actually, to be honest, I can't remember if it was three 4Ks and two 1080s or if it was the three 1080s and two 4Ks. But I had no buffering when it happened and it was all five of those different movies. It was awesome to be able to see that happen. Whereas HughesNet, you're 400 to 500 milliseconds and sometimes it can creep a little bit higher on there. I have been a kid and sitting and trying to game on HughesNet. It's impossible. I get cussed out all the different times. Some different places will even try to start blocking you because they think that you're cheating to try and help manipulate the lag. And to put this into perspective, if you watch, which the speeds on HughesNet are fast enough in order to be able to do this for download. If you watch a single two hour long 4K video, you have used up your entire data limit of 30, like over 30 gigabytes in a single movie. On HughesNet's website, they say that their stuff is optimized for 480p. 480p is absolutely horrible resolution. And you try watching that on TV now, maybe on a cell phone, yeah, 480p is not bad. But you try watching on a TV, anything like that, it's going to be so blurry and grainy. Oh, man. I don't know. They say that that's DVD quality, but I don't know what kind of DVDs that they're still watching anymore. So for myself, the obvious winner is Starlink. You have way more data. You have way faster speeds on download and upload. The lower latency is, I mean, it's approaching 10 to 20 times slower or not slower, uh, 10 to 20 times faster on the latency, so much, much lower actual latencies that are happening. The contract's way better. I mean, they even have some of those funny things with like how you have to admit that what Mars is a sovereign nation independent whenever they put Starlink satellite dishes around Mars, something like that. And on top of it, Starlink is only going to continue to get better over the next coming years as they put more and more satellites up there. I mean, to be approved for 40, was it 40 to 42,000 plus satellites up into space, it's, it's going to completely blow out every other different internet provider out there. And who knows, by the time that Starlink gets a lot of all their different stuff up, I mean, are some of these other companies like what is it amazon's new one are they even going to attempt to try and compete with them i mean yes like amazon has a little bit smaller of a dish but who knows how that's going to compete but it'll be interesting to try and see appreciate you watching hopefully this was informative for you if you definitely hit the like button for me comment down below peace everybody